Hello, 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 everybody. I'm Pedro. And I am Meredith. <laughs> this is Gritty <laughs> Reboot. <laughs> the grittiest damn reboot show there's ever been. I don't know what that means. Why? Yeah, for some reason, like, Meredith was, like, chilling, like, five feet from her microphone until I did an introduction, and she just slid and was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you were so far away, I just kind of looked over, went, why were you just, like, hanging out? Like, you didn't know we were about to start a podcast. I'm just chilling. Just chilling. Sometimes I try to catch her by surprise by the star of the show. Doesn't always work. No. So this week, we are finishing up our installment on Silent Night, Deadly Night, with its loose 2012 remake, Silent Night. Very, very, very loose. Very loose. It's really just taking the concept and the title, and half the title, actually, and from the original film. And that's really about it. Paying right? homage in some sense. Yeah, the, the, there is a bit of homage. There is a few references here and there to the previous work. But for the most part, this is almost an entirely original story. Well, I don't know if it's original, but it, it certainly is different from the other film. Very much so. Yeah, so before we get started today, first off, uh, we wanted to mention, as we are sitting here on our Christmas PJs, to uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. And if uh, you're listening to this a little bit after the holiday, also Merry Christmas to you anyway, which I'm sure you're probably sick of Christmas. Happy though. New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You will appreciate that as well. But it is still before the holidays for us, and Meredith is deep in the Christmas spirit. We've been shotgun on those Christmas movies. Yeah, all day. Yeah. I and mean, yeah. we'll do it all day tomorrow. Well, yeah, we're out of Christmas horror. We don't have anything else left, I don't believe. We already Yeah, did. we have uh, Better Watch Out. Oh, we have Better Watch Out. I forget about that one. We like yeah. that movie a lot. We can try to squeeze that one in if it's available. I don't know where it is. Yeah, because we do Krampus tomorrow. Yeah, Krampus is the other one. We already did Black Christmas. We did Silent Night, Deadly Night. We don't do Silent Night, we Deadly do Night. We do Die Night. Hard we tomorrow. We covered it. Die Hard is always done Christmas Eve. Yeah. There's not a single Christmas Eve that goes by that we don't watch Die Hard. Yeah, that's a tradition. It very much is, so. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Agreed. I love it all. I'm going to make cookies tomorrow. Oh, man, I'm so pissed off at my cookies. Oh, I know. My mother-in-law sends me these gluten-free cookies, gluten-free, dairy-free cookies to deal with all my food allergies I got when I turned 30. And she makes them special for me, and she makes a ton of them so I can just pig out throughout the holiday. And I've been waiting for them since Thursday, and we're recording here on Saturday evening. And they are still in San Antonio, yeah. lost far away from me here. And they probably will not arrive till God knows when. And I think in that package is some presents as well that your mother was sending. Yeah. Not just to mention my, my cookies, but we got every other package in but that one. So I was left to deal without my beloved cookies. The one thing I, I look forward to at the entire holiday season. I'm hoping for a Christmas miracle. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of hoping that we're going to get done with the show and I'm going to look outside and it's just going to be sitting there. Mm. Or my luck, just some raccoon just chomping on it. We don't have raccoons this year. We have cats in the attic. Well... At least we're doing better than we were. That's very true. That's very true. If you want to let us know that our Christmas spirit is just pure bah humbugging you, by all means, the best way to let us know that is to get a hold of us at grittyrebootcast at gmail.com, as well as uh, grittyreboot at Instagram and at TikTok. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you for the soft agreement. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's true. <laughs> it is. It is true. You can gritty reboot at almost any social media platform, and you can find me. Uh, Disillusion of 13 on X uh, or Twitter, whatever you prefer to call it. I'm not really on there a lot, so that's probably not a good way to get a hold of me. I wonder what the kitties call it. I, I don't know. I don't think the kitties call it anything. They just meows because they're, they're kittens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? The cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't form. Nope. Cats. Yeah. Nope. No. <laughs> 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 so how does Silent Night start? How does Silent Night start? Well, I will tell you. It starts with a man shaving rather harshly on his own face. It's, it does. It's just a shot of guy shaving. Yeah, that's all it is. Then you can hear a woman screaming who's tied up. So we're setting up an, an early murder and torture scene here by mm -hmm. our, our new Santa who, who who immediately hits the ground running, correct? Yeah, he's he's basically getting dressed here. He's getting his suit on. He's fixing his mask and... I want to stylize shots of him getting dressed. I think there's one yeah. shot of him like whoosh, sticking out his hand and pulling on the glove. I thought it was a little much, but it is what it is. Then there's a guy, um, what looks like in a basement, tied up with lights wrapped around his head and body. Yeah, he's just wrapped up with the Christmas tree lights in a particularly nice way as he comes down fully dressed. Yeah. The girl's still thrashing in the background. And he's just trying to figure out who the fuck this guy is and how to get out of the situation. And Santa kind of taunts him. Yeah, he definitely does. He Plays definitely with does. him a little bit. Yeah. 
Just like our black cat plays with his little mouse toy. That's what I was talking about the kittens earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Just for this moment. What? Why are you all? Jeez. You hate my callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> After a little taunting by Santa, mm -hmm. he electrocutes the guy. His head kind of explodes. Yeah, his eyeballs explode out. Yeah. And this is a reference to Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, where they have a pretty lousy kill where they blow up a guy's head with electricity. It's a car battery that makes his head explode. Well, not his head explode. Makes his eyes blow out of his head. Mm. So it's kind of a throwback to that. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. The movie has a nice score. Nice score. And then we go and we meet Jamie King, who is the deputy. She is... I just forgot her name. Uh, Deputy Aubrey. Aubrey, that's all. I can't remember her name. <laughs> I don't know why name. my brain was like Alabaster. Like, that's not right. That's <laughs> yeah. not right at all. Aubrey. So Deputy Alabaster, she is a flawed woman. Listen, this character sucks because she is like a, a combination of cliches, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. She has a tragic backstory. Her husband just died. I know you were getting into all that, but I'm just getting it in right now. And she doubts her ability to do the job. Yeah. But she she still must soldier on because no one else will do it. She has to live up to the name of her father and everyone's doubts. She has a lot of cliches going on here. She's not poorly portrayed by Jamie King. I like Jamie King a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think she's great. Yeah, I think she's really underrated as an actress. But I just... The screenplay isn't quite as clever as it thinks it is, and that's a yeah. big problem. And that's one thing it has in common with the original Silent Night. But I don't think it has a, as much charm as that movie. Well, she's called by her boss, who is Malcolm McDowell, and he Mal plays a sheriff. Malcolm McDowell is fantastic. Now, whatever they just paid, huge scenery. Whatever they paid Malcolm McDowell, it wasn't enough. The, even his weird like covering up of his accent, right? Yeah, that's the strangest thing. Like, who gives a shit if he has an accent? Like, he's supposed to be from the town. I was like, what? Some British motherfucker could move over and fall in love with this charming? When well, they're in Utah, right? Yeah, this charming Utahian. Utahian. Utahan. 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 No. No, is that how it is? Utahian. Utahian. Is that how it is, really? I imagine. That doesn't sound like a real word. Well, it's I'm Utah. Saying, if I'm, if I'm walking and then you add Utah. Ian. Ian? Who's Ian? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta sound it out. <laughs> Gotta sound it out. Uh. She's basically complaining to her boss that she doesn't want to come in because it's Christmas Eve. Yeah, she doesn't want to come in because it's Christmas and she's trying to over dealing with the grief of the loss of her husband. Yeah. She, do, do, how did he die, by the way? I don't know. He doesn't tell you, right? No, I don't think so. No, it's not important. Doesn't, doesn't, what, was, what was his name? I don't even know his name. Yeah, I was going to say. Her husband, Peter Parker, killed <laughs> in the line of duty of being the Spider-Man. We have no idea who he is. Like, he's just a character beat. Yeah. That's all he is. He's like this... Check mark we're supposed to have, so we sympathize with this character. When I think they just could have done better writing to get around some of that, because it's a little much, you know. Yeah, because she's like, it's my first Christmas without him, and he's like, I don't give a shit, get into work. Yeah, because I think it's okay if she's dealing with that, but she still is confident about being a police officer. But there's just so much stuff going around with her character that they just overdid it on attributes to give her. <laughs> She dresses for work, and Lady Deputy has her parents over for Christmas. She Lady Deputy, is that what we're calling Aubrey? Yeah, that's what I've been calling her. Lady Antebellum. Lady Deputy. Lady Deputy. <laughs> <laughs> no one has real character names when it comes to us on this. Now, you know, Deputy Aubrey just doesn't have a ring to it. Defi Lady no, Deputy her, her character doesn't have a ring to it, so it's fine. Okay. What happened next? She, apolog oh, she right. apologizes for having to work. Yeah. To who? To her parents. To her parents. Yeah, because her parents are, they just like showed up at the house because they were all going to have like a nice time and, you know, they were going to comfort her during her sadness and yeah, now she's got to work. No one to comfort. Yeah. And then we go to a little girl who is probably about 13, 13 maybe. 14 years old, I'd say. Yeah. I, I think they should listen to this 14. Big time potty mouth. Just potty mouth. Look at you. Just like. <laughs> bitching about her mom. So she might be 14 years old, but she's an absolute cunt. Yeah. So she is like, I mean, as far to the cunt side as you could possibly. Oh my anybody. God. She's demanding to get her mother's wallet and go buy her, away her heart medication. So she, her heart pills <laughs> like the movie, this movie lays everything on really thin. Uh -huh. And this is one of those things. They want you to hate this girl and listen, they're successful. I hate her. She's, She's well played in in that respect. I, I think she does the job, but it, it is over the top. She hides her mother's heart pills so they can go to the store and buy 
a Prada bag? Is that what she wants? Something or? like that. Yeah, I forget what she used. Louis Vuitton? Mm-hmm. Something like that. She wanted some fancy kind of shit like that. And so while her mother is going upstairs to like get all of her stuff together, some tragedy strikes, does it not? Yeah, the girl opens the door for Santa, who immediately electrocutes her, then shoves a fire poker through her face. Yeah, so the movie kills a 14-year-old girl. That's the kind of vibe we're running with. We've seen a few movies to where uh, kids get killed, so this is now one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, did we officially cut? Co- no, we didn't officially cover Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Mm-mm. We'll do that one day, and that's that's why weirdest. We're gonna kill a bunch of kids in a movie Hollywood film, but this movie just has it's just one. Yeah, even though it's not really a Hollywood movie. We see Lady Deputy in the church praying. Aubrey, and we get the movie's most despicable character. Another opportunity for them to lay it on just super thick. In case you didn't know, like, the only thing he's missing is a throbbing erection. I know. Right? That's the only thing. that they. I don't know why they didn't go the extra mile and give him, like, a dildo to put underneath there to just have, like, a throbbing erection anytime he's around a woman. But, yes, there's Aubrey trying to pray and trying to get a little moment's peace. And, like, the priest is basically attempting to, like, take his dick out for her. Yeah, he puts his hand on her shoulder. And, like, squeezes it, and, like, yeah. he palpates it. Palpate. Ooh. Yeah. He palpates. Mm. He palpates it. He does. Like that. You like it when I palpate it like that? It's it's just icky. It's not funny. Mm-mm. <laughs> it's just a strange. Yeah, it's just a cringy kind of moment. So you sort of cringe while the movie's, I guess, expecting you to laugh. And there's a lot of these kind of moments in this. I, I guess I sort of feel that I can kind of mention that. People really like this movie and it gets pretty good reviews. And I mean, I don't, I don't really see it. Yeah. I I don't really see it. And this is another one of those scenes that just makes me like, ugh, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Lady deputy goes to work and they get a call about Santa. She goes to investigate. So we already have a killer Santa on the loose. No, a complaint about a Santa. Yeah. Complaint about a Santa. She, She walks through town and she sees a bunch of Santas and Donna Logue is playing a sleazy Santa. And she goes over there, and he's really giving her a hard time. He's being just a complete and utter asshole. Yeah, yeah, Donald Logue is doing his sort of Donald Logue bit. Um, He's phoning it in here, but at least it's better than nothing. He doesn't necessarily add a lot to it. His character is just supposed to be another red herring. Mm -hmm. What is ultimately one of the most pointless, absolutely trivial whodunits there's ever been in a horror movie. But I digress. He's just supposed to be that, and this scene's supposed to be a bit of fun. It's okay. Donald Logue helps, but he certainly doesn't make the scene or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just him being sort of a saucy Santa. We see, we see a teenager steal some money from his grandpa, and then we get an homage to the previous movie. Yeah, we get a throwback to the catatonic grandpa mm-hmm. scene. His grandpa but grabs his arm life. and warns him about Christmas Eve. And, and this scene sucks, too. Not everything is sucked up to this point, but this scene absolutely stinks. Yeah. It's forced in there. It's just a reference to the other movie that doesn't make any sense at all. And the performance of the actor playing the grandfather is nowhere near unhinged enough or different enough to really matter or be memorable. I just have to bring it up now that, that this scene is just an absolute waste of time in this movie. Mm-hmm. That's all. It's a bad scene. Next, we get a call at the sheriff station that there's a bad smell at a house, at an abandoned house. Yeah. And so Lady Deputy goes to investigate the bad smell coming from the house. She finds the man that was electrocuted before, the, the man that had the lights wrapped around his head. Yeah, he's another deputy. Yeah. It, yeah, that's when we learn that he's another, another deputy. Yeah, he's, he's a deputy who didn't make it in for work earlier in the day. He's having an affair with somebody's wife. He was being very naughty. He was being very naughty. So this is what got him killed. And now the stakes have been taken up for these characters. That they understand there's an actual killer on mm-hmm. the yeah, she goes up back upstairs to search the rest of the house. She goes upstairs, gun drawn. She sees, hears a phone ring. She opens a drawer, and it's a severed hand holding the phone. Which is kind of neat. I will say that. The movie does have nice score effects. I can't argue that about the movie. Then there's a torso in the corner on top of, like, a nightstand. Yeah, and that's the girl that was tied up earlier. She's been cut up into bits. Yeah. Confirmation, she's dead. She did. Boss McDowell shows up and chews scenery. And literally McDowell just does that. He just comes in there, has some one-liners. Yeah. And doesn't really further the plot. He just has the one-liners. We already know what's going on. Like, there's a killer Santa. We got to move. 
So mm. we head over to the the hotel room. Yeah, now we move over to the hotel room where they're doing the like a sleazy soft hotel porn shoot. room. It's so sleazy. Yeah, the the movie does have a certain sense of sleaze too, which is fine. The original film did as well. And I do want to mention, and we're not quite there yet, but it leads to that that we see the mayor's daughter doing coke, but. Courtney Palm, who we remember from Zombievers, another excellent titled film, she will be topless here for about, what, six minutes of pure screen time? Yeah. I mean, for a, quite a long time, she is going she, to yeah. have her top off. You know, once the mayor's daughter leaves this scene, she's going to take her, her bra off and the softcore shoot will turn to a chase and murder scene very quickly. But she's not going to have anything on, really. Mm -hmm. And it's oh, it goes a distractingly long time. Now, luckily for us, this is going to go in our pantheon of distractingly long nude scenes, along with My Bloody Valentine, the remake there, mm -hmm. as we had that one actress run around completely, fully frontally nude for like what? That was like a four minute scene of her just hanging out butt ass naked and getting chased naked. Mm -hmm. So this joins that one as well. Well, Santa knocks on the door here and he's got like a sickle and he impales one of the ladies that's was filming. Yeah, the, she was the, the camera the, photographer. Yeah. Well, I thought the guy was a photographer. He was the film, the guy with the film. No, she was filming. Oh, she, she was filming? She puts the camcorder down, and that gives him the video footage later. Oh, okay. She puts the camcorder down, she goes to the door, she gets impaled on the scythe. And then the guy who's doing the photography, he's the one that turns around and says, like, who the hell are you? And he gets the scythe right through his balls. Yeah. Right underneath him. And this sends Courtney Palm running. She and, hides in the back. By the way, what were these guys doing that was naughty? They, were, they were taking dirty pictures, but they they weren't that dirty. Yeah. Like they, they, Nobody was out. I don't know. Yeah, this wasn't like a, a filthy shoot or anything like that. That seemed all above board. Yeah, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really make any sense. His yeah, motivation yeah. is very blurry. In yeah, this. yeah, it really is. Especially later on when we sort of get like a, I guess like a, a grand overarching narrative grafted onto the movie. Like, this kill doesn't make any sense if you look at it, and neither does the previous one. Yeah. But we'll, I'll mention it when we get there later on. But So, yes, he, he goes on a little killing spree here and chases Courtney Palm into the bathroom. I know she has a name. It doesn't matter. He comes in and wraps the shower curtain around her head. Photographer shoots at him, and she escapes. He is not dead. He is bleeding from his taint. Yeah. He gets his gun, and he buys her—I her, think her name is Maria. He buys Maria just a few moments. And he gets killed off screen, by the way, unceremoniously, but at least he did help. And she's able to get away and she falls away in a really cheesy looking slow motion green screen effect. Yeah, she jumps out the window and lands on a pile of garbage. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movie cliches ever is that movie garbage is so soft. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like everyone threw away pillows that day. Nobody threw away glass or nobody threw away any metal. Or anything yeah, like I know. That. Nobody threw away old knives. They all threw away pillows and comforters that day. <laughs> Okay, so she is being chased now by Santa with an axe. He's dropped his sickle, and he now has his axe. Yeah, he's got the more traditional Silent Night, Deadly Night axe. She runs directly into, like, an area where they sell Christmas trees, but and there's a wood chipper. This is, like, the least Christmassy feel I can think of for a Christmas movie, right? Yeah. There's no snow anywhere no. or anything like that. It's clearly shot out of season. Yeah. And it just doesn't feel cold at all. Like, if you could see her breath while she was running around. Like now, Christmas granted, in her furrow. Yeah, yeah. It very much feels like a Texas Christmas. It, it just, it's not very convincing. But she does run to a Christmas tree farm. She goes to run, but he chops off her leg. And Which is pretty brutal. He does chop it off, and she has a ton of, like, Evil Dead-style kind of blood just squirting out of that thing. Santa picks her up and picks up the, the leg and heads the wood chipper, which is very... It was telegraphed from the very Yeah, the second you see the wood chipper, like, well, I know where this is going. And that's where she is a victim of the fucking wood chipper. Yeah, she throws her leg in there, which I found kind of amusing. He just kind of tosses it in there. Yeah, to show her yeah, what she's up for. Yeah, it picks her up and then pushes her feet first into that. Yeah. I'd have gone head first, but that's me. Well, I guess you suffer more when you're feet first. Yeah, that would be the idea. Yeah. Let's talk about the suffering level of, of going into a wood chipper. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that's I why they did that. I think about every now and then when I watch Fargo. Yeah. Yeah, I think about that every now and then. Or Deadpool. <laughs> I like the wood in there. <laughs> I, do, I do like wood chipper scenes or kills in movies. Mm -hmm. Especially Tucker and Dale when he just dives head first. <laughs> yeah. Like that guy, he had no idea what happened. His hands hurt for a moment, then boom. <laughs> that was it. Nothing. I love that he just dives head first. But it is a nice kill. I do want to mention that. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's pretty well shot. It's very gory. It's blood all over Santa. They show a ton of blood coming out the other side. 
Um, this is, like I said, the first time, um, first time I ever saw Courtney Palmer or anything. And she's a bit of a screen clean herself as she's come along over the years in a lot of these B movies. And she does a really nice job. You know, she's screaming her head off and like I said, willing to go topless. It didn't look like it was cold that day, which like I said, kind of hurt the scene, but still she has to run around, like I said, without a shirt on for like, probably like a whole two or three days. Yeah. Of shooting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, at least two different, three different locations. We're back with Lady Deputy in the office and she gives her orders. Sheriff gives his orders and they're off. He goes to the, see the mother and daughter who was electrocuted and speared. And the deputies find the victims in the hotel, the, yeah, the, the photographer did, and the lady. Did the mother survive? I think so. Yeah, the mother survives because I remember her talking about, because we see the, the daughter dead. Yeah. But the mother, she Yeah, survived. she survives. Yeah, and she's she, able to, it doesn't amount to anything. I just wanted to mention that. She, she has that whole talk about, you know, her, her daughter being an asshole, but yeah. she didn't deserve that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we're supposed to, like, give a shit. Yeah, that's why I was like, what, what's the point of this movie? Yeah. Like, why are we, like, oh, God, this tar- terrible kid that you showed us how awful she was is dead. We're, like, she's this cartoon character who's having emotion for at that moment. The movie has a lot of odd little beats like that. But it, it does escalate, and we learn that the town is certainly under attack. They know that he's dressed as a Santa, and they're not going to be, be able to get any help, correct? There's, I think they invent some cockamamie, the roads out due to weather. I don't see any bad weather anywhere. But for some reason, like, no one else is going to be able to come through to help them, right? Yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah, there's a weird plot point that they established for that for some reason. When it's not really that important. Like, who are they going to call? The fucking killer Those Santa customers. service? Yeah, like, right? I mean, <laughs> like, who's, who are they going to bring in? I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, they just went through an extra effort to try to deal with the cell phone problem. Yeah. But they don't even really deal with it. A lot of people like this movie, and, you know, there's a lot, a lot of problems with this movie. I agree. I, I certainly do agree. I don't need a movie to be perfect, but... Like I said, I just kind of find it unengaging as well. The pervy priest is back, creeping everyone out by taking pictures of the Santa gals. He's taking pictures of their clothed midsections, right? Yeah, and they're super blurry. Yeah, and I'm like, was this, is this, oh, is this his fetish? He's like, oh, blurry midsection. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't really get it. Like, this is a strange character, and I don't, like, I don't understand this turn. What, whatever it is, it, it, you know, it's, it's not, it's not funny. It's not a joke. Mm-hmm. It's just a thing that happens in the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's just a little strange to me, but it's kind of whatever, I suppose. He pervs out, and that's all that happens. It's a waste of time. The sheriff and the deputies review the footage from the hotel. We get to see Courtney Palm naked again, in case you had, in case you missed it. Yeah. We would see her one more time. And then we're back with the priest again, who is stealing from the collection plate. In case you hadn't learned, this guy was a piece of shit. Yeah. He lays it on even thicker as he steals from the poor on Christmas Eve. And there's like no one at church. One woman. There's one old lady that's there. Yeah. And then the priest starts his sermon and he talks just absolute stupid madness. It goes on for way longer than it should, right? Yeah. It's like. It should have been like 18 seconds max of him talking. It goes on for like a couple of minutes, right? Yeah. It's just bl- blammering on. It feels like 20 minutes. And it's no wonder nobody's here. Yeah, exactly. That's the kind of sermon that he gives until, thankfully, our hero of the movie, the Santa, comes in to, per- to perk things up once again. And then Santa shows up and listens to his crazy sermon. And basically, the priest comes right up to Santa and lays his hands on the, the pew and Santa comes and chops him off. Yeah, he cuts his fingers off with a box cutter. And then stabs him over and over again. Yeah, he really just fucks him up. Kills him, thankfully, ends his involvement in the film. Yeah, but he leaves the old lady alive. He does, and, and she says, and she even begs for her life, and he gives her the collection money that mm-hmm. the priest stole. So that does track from the old movie as well. This version of a killer Santa won't kill you if you haven't been naughty. Yeah. You been evil in any way if you're just chilling or hanging out. Or a kid. Lady Deputy thinks Santa Killer is Stein Carson. He's another red herring in this movie. Yeah, so we, we introduce the Stein Carson who kills some time for us. He tells a fucked up story about another killer Santa. Yeah, so she goes to meet Mr. Carson at a bar, and he gives us what is a pretty well-executed flashback scene, though. Yeah. I think it's pretty stylish with just the red Santa's suit sort of lighting up the frame in black and white and the flames as well. Uh, I like the way this is done. This is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. This is probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Well, he ends up running from the, the cops and, yeah, and because, attacks the lady deputy. So lady deputy or uh, la- lady... Um, Aubrey. Aubrey, thank you. Lady Aubrey. 
It's like she's <laughs> Lady yeah. Aubrey. Yeah, because Aubrey's she's following the facts of the case, and and if you want to try to stick with the case, like you need to have it go throughout. Mm-hmm. And this movie, you know, just kind of has it pop back in and out. But at least here, it does sort of work because she's basically going through the I think the porn the porn guy's phone and who was the last number to call him mm-hmm. and it calls that guy Carson. Yeah, like his phone rings and that's why he takes off. He doesn't try to explain it. He doesn't say to be like, well, yeah, I knew the guy. He just runs immediately. He yeah. just red herrings, the most red herring thing he mm-hmm. can red herring do. So he runs and it leads to a, a a pretty. So if he was a red herring, like he just flat out assaults the cop. Yeah. Like he doesn't, he's he assaults in jail. her and attempts to kill her, right? It's not mm-hmm. just like, like, get away from me, a shove. Like he's like, nah, I'm fucking you up. And he only gets saved by Malcolm McDowell and his armada of lens flares coming to save Aubrey. Yeah. This movie, it's like they bought the lens flare pack for After Effects, and they're like, how many do we use? And the editor said, like, all of them. All of them. Because it's just full of lens flares. Anything that's a light in the background, lens flares. Yeah. And it's not a real lens flare, because it's not shot anamorphically. You can tell. It's not that pretty. It'd have been a lot cooler if they did that. But it, it just, it's pretty distracting. This scene really sticks out as like this lens flare, you know, hellscape. So after the attack, she calls her dad and tells her, tells him basically that she's just not cut out for this job. And he tells her she will be fine. He's, her dad's wrong. She's not cut out for she's not cut out for this job. She should leave. Yeah. She sucks. Yeah. She She's a lousy detective. She's not really good. She yeah. she's scared of everything. You kind of have to be a little bit brave when you're a cop. Shouldn't have the stones for it. She's not really a good detective. I mean, she figures things out later, but literally only because the screenplay needs her to. He also tells her it's not the first time that the family has had to put down a bad Santa. So that sets that whole thing up. Yeah, so we we get this, and it's like, all right, thanks, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. Maybe he shot Phoebe Phoebe Kate's dad in Gremlins, and that's what he's talking about. (laughs) He's the one who dropped him down there. Sheriff McDowell wants Lady Deputy to scour the streets looking for the Santa. Just go door to door looking for bad Santas. Mm -hmm. Because the mayor is out, and he's we see the mayor, and he's smoking, and we meet his daughter. Well, we know his daughter. Well, we yeah. see his daughter. Yeah, we see his daughter yeah. doing the coke and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. She's just horned up throughout the movie. She comes home with another man, and the mayor's just like, whatever. Yeah, he doesn't care. He knows his daughter's about to get some dick. Yeah. Sheriff McDowell calls him and gets strangled by lights by the killer Santa. I love this, too, because they're on the phone and he's getting choked out. And a very lame kill, by the way. He's just choking him with lights. Yeah. He's done better in the original film. Because it was at least it had funny gargantuan strength. Here, it's just this. The only thing that's amusing about it is McDowell can hear him like, oh, 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 choking in there. And he's like, I guess we got a bad connection. Sorry, I got to let you go. Yeah, I know. He <laughs> just totally fucks he's him. He's an awful, completely terrible detective. Or sheriff. The cops in this movie couldn't catch a cold. The daughter strips and there's a gratuitous shot of her body. But she's not nude. No. So this might, well, might as well be on free form. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's not much to it. I mean, it's not even that particularly revealing. No, it's just like obvious, though. Yeah. Yes, it, it is. It is a leering male gaze. Yeah. It, no one eye fucks any dudes in this movie, sadly. <laughs> the music is like we're, we're in a softcore porn at this point. Yeah. yeah it's it really very is. softcore porn. Very softcore porn-esque. Santa Killer comes and kills both the daughter and the boyfriend with an axe. He leaves the youngest daughter. Well, no, alone. he kills he kills her with the moose head. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah there's an homage the to yeah. Linnea Quigley. Yeah, and and there should be. That, like, that's one spot where they definitely should have thrown an homage. A is homage. there is it Linnea or Linnea? I say Linnea Quigley. Okay. But I have never met Miss Linnea Quigley, so I can't say 110% if that's correct. But it could be. Very much could be. Santa Killer leaves the youngest girl and gives her a candy cane that's covered in blood. Yeah, this is not as cool as what was happening in the original. Yeah. But it is another nice homage to it. It doesn't suck or anything like that. No. I think these scenes are, are pretty well done. So, as far as kills go, this is, I mean, decent slasher action. There's a parade downtown, and there's a ton of Santas in that parade. Hundreds. And Lady Deputy spots Donald Logue, her kind of suspect in this whole ordeal. Kind of. And he runs immediately as soon as he sees her. But they capture him. And he spouts a bunch of nonsense about Christmas and that he's innocent. Yeah, he goes on a rant. They just end up taking him to the police station. Sheriff McDowell orders Lady Deputy to gather more evidence. She spots Stein Carson, who pulls a gun on her. 
She shoots him in between the eyes, killing him instantly. Yeah, because they have this confrontation where the whole bit is like, you don't have the guts to shoot me. And then, like, she just does. Yeah. She just kills him. <laughs> like, yeah, you're wrong, buddy. She shoots him between the eyes. I guess another reference to the original film. And I think this is okay. I think what sucks about it is, doesn't this trigger her revelation? Yeah. So she sees, like, what? A present? Yeah. And all of a sudden she's like, wait a minute. Every victim got a present that was a lump of coal. And like this kind of dawns on her like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like there hasn't been like shots of these things or her noticing them or anything like that. Really? No, like it hasn't really, they just kind of shoved this whole, like there's a grand overarching scheme to what the Santa is doing, which is completely untrue because there isn't this box or lump of coal for the 14 year old girl no. that gets killed. There isn't one for, um, Who's the other random kill in the movie? Well, like the mayor's daughter? The priest? Yeah, like the priest. He doesn't give... Yeah, the priest The priest doesn't fit yeah. that mold at all. He's just a piece of shit. That's all. Yeah. So it doesn't work. And I mean, listen, it doesn't all have to make sense, but it can't be glaringly awful like that. Like where it just doesn't make a lick of sense yeah. in the narrative of the film. You don't need that to make this third act come together. It just was the laziest way he could have gone about it. That's the only thing I'll say about the script at that point. She gets a vision and goes to check on her parents. Yeah, she has a vision. Basically, yeah, she has a, a psychic yeah. vision. A, di a deus ex machina a vision to her to get to the next part of the story. Yeah, like I said, I mean, a lot of people like this movie, but... It's, it's fair. It's, I mean, I've, I've seen dumber things. Like, it's not bad. It's not awful, but no. it's just kind of whatever. So she rushes home to find, obviously, oh, no, her dad's turning around. What happened? Her dad is dead. Yeah. He has been gutted like a fish. Santa kills the deputy outside the police station, takes out the lights and brings out a flamethrower. Yeah. And then we see Lady Deputy go The police home station gets uh, covered mm -hmm. in Christmas Susperia lighting, mm -hmm. green and red, like all over. Mm -hmm. as he makes his siege through it. And I do want to mention, his siege through the police station is pretty well done. Yeah. Things that aren't well done is like, before that, like I'm supposed to care about Lady Lady Aubrey's dad. Yeah. Like, I'm supposed to care about that? Like, it, it, like okay, fine, sure. Go get to the third act. Let that be your motivation. There's too many irons, too many fires in the poker. Too many pokers in the fire, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> too many, oh, all oh, those oh, foliers oh, and those pokers. Oh, all these poker games on fire. Oh, my God, what a disaster. <laughs> uh, so, so, yes, there's just too much stuff really going on with her character for that to matter. But, you know, back to the siege. Like I said, I think this is pretty well laid out, even though uh, Malcolm McDowell's death is a little underwhelming. Yeah. He just kind of gets covered by CG fire without doing much. Like you said, there's a bunch of red and green lights that are super festive. Santa lets Donald Logue out of one or of the cells. Literally just so they can have a, a dialogue and a fight scene. Mm -hmm. So they can get the rest of the, so they can get their money's worth out of the two days they paid for Donald Logue. Yeah, he eggs Santa on and, they get, and gets attacked and Santa beats his head in. With Christmas themed brass nucks. Nucks. I think they said ho, ho, ho. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Lady Deputy the Lord's Prayer on each one comes into the station, red light, and she's attacked by Santa. She sprays some shit in his face, but he eventually gets the upper hand. They just shaky cam their way through this fight scene. But no, she takes the flamethrower and gets Santa with it. Yeah, she burns him, but not like obliterates him. She lights him on fire. Yeah, and then you, all you see is his mask. So you know that he's on to the sequel. Yeah, they, they try really hard to sequel bait this. Mm -hmm. So he ends up just there, and she saves the other one of the other characters. That, that was Brenda. There. We didn't even really introduce her earlier. No, it's not important. Like there was another, there was another sheriff who got like an axe to the face, who says the garbage day line that we just ran right over. It's not important. Yeah, like it's just, it's just something that happens in the movie. It's just a killing killer vignette and a nice reference. But she gets out of there. The police station burns. And then just when you think the movie's going to end, Which there's a flashback. So, like, now we get to find out who the killer was. So everything about this whodunit was completely pointless. And I can't stress how pointless it was. It literally has a post credit scene to explain what the fuck the movie was. Yeah. And it's this. The gentleman who lit his wife on fire in that flashback from earlier in the film, the killer is his son who saw the whole event take place. Yeah. And he saw Aubrey's father murder him. And so he waited 30 years for revenge for some reason. And that's it. Yeah. He lived a life that led to only one thing, vengeance for his crazy father for killing his mother. 
what the fuck? At that particular time, it just makes no sense. Yeah, it just, it doesn't work. It's like this shoehorn thing to make the movie like, oh, look, it was this cool little twist in it. When really, it just weighs the movie down when I was like, well, it's kind of neat, I guess. And it just doesn't really work. Mm -mm. There's a nice burn effect on this guy. But who fucking cares, right? If you want to do a whodunit, do it right. Just don't do this stupid bullshit. Yeah. When I, I, I think this movie didn't really need it, and it would have been significantly stronger without it. All right. So I think this movie is a solid 6 out of 10. I didn't hate it. It had some good kills. There were bits of fun to be had with this film. but. For the most part, it's got some lazy writing. It's got some lazy acting. I think that's really the way to put it. Yeah. It's a little bit on the lazy side. I think there's a few inspired bits here and there. A few nice chase sequences, some nice kills. We did forget to mention the boyfriend of the mayor's daughter. He gets his head split by an axe, which is a particularly impressive kill. Mm -hmm. That head split is amazing. It really is. Actually, that whole sequence with her going through the, the antlers is good, too. You know, there are nice little moments like that, but I think the story really lets it down. I think the character work they try to do really wastes, I think, underrated talent like Malcolm McDowell and Jamie King. Even though if I do like, don't put avocado on the burger, you know, yeah. every now and then a, a joke like that would kind of make me smirk more than it would make me laugh. But it's just an underwhelming film for me. I, I would say a five. You know, I just I really don't recommend you take the time to really watch this movie. I think there's better Christmas movies you could watch and better Christmas horror films that you could probably enjoy. Yeah, Black Christmas. Black Christmas. I think you'd watch the original. I think you'd be better off with the Christmas Evil as opposed to this. Yeah. I think even the mean one, I think, is more fun than this. Ugh. I haven't even seen that. I don't, I don't want to. I just don't think it's really that great a film at the end of the day. Well, there was not much in the way of trivia for this movie, but we will see. I want to talk to you a little bit about what this movie was inspired by. And it was inspired by a true crime story called mm. the Covina Christmas Massacre. Oh. It took place on Christmas Eve 2008. Bruce Jeffrey Pardo, 45, wearing a Santa suit, knocked on the door to the property belonging to his former in-laws. He had with him multiple 9mm handguns and a large gift-wrapped package containing a rolling air compressor converted to spray spraying racing fuel. When he knocked on the door at 11.30 p.m., his eight-year-old niece answered. Pardle pulled out the handguns and immediately shot, wounding her. He then fired indiscriminately at fleeing Jeez. partygoers. Wow. After opening fire with the handguns, Pardo wrapped the package containing the compressor and sprayed fuel around the interior of the house. Police believe that the fire was intended to be ignited with a flare but when the fuel contacted an open flame in the house, there was an explosion. Set everything up, yeah. Between gunfire and flames, a total of nine people were killed and three were injured. One of the survivors made it to the neighbor's house, where she called police and identified Pardo as the likely suspect. Likely. The explosion and fire left Pardo with third-degree burns on his arms and legs. After setting the home on fire, Pardo changed out of the Santa suit and drove to his brother's house in Sil Slymore, Slymar, Silvermore, I don't know, where he was later found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. His brother was not present in the home at the time of Pardo's death. Jeez, what a tragic tale. Yeah. yeah. Also, fire safety, no joke. Yeah. Yeah, even got this guy. Yeah, that's what did him in. Yeah, he burned himself. The There was no user review, so I can't give you a, a major score on that, but... It was uh, rated 58% on Rotten Tomatoes and has a 5.2 out of 10 on IMDb. So middle of the road. You know, I think that's probably where this movie will end up sitting in the grand pantheon of things. I think Silent Night will end up probably being rebooted again. I know there's been talk of it over the last couple of years. So, you know, with that, like I said, you, you can certainly understand why this film could be forgotten. Even though it's not, like I said, a bad movie. It's just kind of there. And then I have, I chose a 10-star review. The review's... There, they were weren't a whole lot of reviews to pick from. Really? Yeah. Mm. This movie is kind of forgotten. Yeah, oddly enough, for taking place coming out eleven years ago, it really doesn't have much of a cultural impact. Mm -mm. All right, ten stars. I remember when I was a teenager and I heard that they were doing a film with a killer Santa Claus, twenty twenty, and everyone was up in arms about this concept. And Silent Night, Deadly Night's hype was born. And to any horror fan or movie nut in general, when people complain and try to ban a film, those are the ones you have to go see first. 
The sad news is most of us did get to see this film when it hit home video a year later. We did not think it was a warranted of what the uproar was about. Now that being said, if Silent Night, which is directed by Stephen C. Miller, would have been a film coming out at the time, I would have seen that uproar was about. While this is very loose remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night, make no mistake about it, this film is a million times better than any other Christmas slasher film I have ever seen so far. Wow. In a small, quiet town in Wisconsin, Santa Claus seems to be coming to town a day early and seems to know who has been a naughty and nice. The film was some of the weirdest yet amusing one-liners I've ever heard, like one I felt could describe this film to a T. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. This film is a gore hound's dream, and there is no lack of killing, death scenes, and fun ways to kill someone. I mean, the film starts off with an electric chair made out of Christmas lights. Malcolm McDowell plays a town sheriff, and you talk about someone who is playing a ball in his role. Malcolm uses so many dopey and silly one-liners that you will find yourself just waiting for that gem he will say next. When he keeps on describing a situation as putting toppings on a hamburger, you just sit there and think (laughs) this is a dark comedy fun. Jamie King plays the deputy who we learn is going through a crisis of her own. This is her first Christmas single, and she has spent trying to piece the puzzle together and stop the evil claws. Jamie, I was ready to write off after she followed up in Sin City with so many bad films till she got a second life with Mother's Day. And now this. She may have found her calling with these horror remakes. The funny thing about this movie is that Stephen, with his wide range of characters, touched on everything a small town could never ask for. Also, this film breaks a lot of taboos, and this viewer blesses him for doing so. A foul-mouthed little girl gets killed in one of the more fun scenes of the film, and when the mother of the girl talks to the police, she claims that she did not wish for this to happen, and she just was hoping for some kind of break or something. Then you have the perverted priest, who is also another scene stealer, especially when his town, every woman, looks either like she stepped out of a modeling agency or off the pages of Playboy. He's giving that guy a break. Yeah, he loves that guy. Yeah. Did anyone else ever notice... Favorite character in the movie. (laughs) (laughs) That in this town, there are no lack of beautiful women and guys who are either drug users, dealers, clueless perverts, or drunks. That's how most America is, right? I think Steven made this film hoping for backlash. He wanted to give fans a fun horror film that had guts and did not care if it offended anyone. This film is what people expected when they see a slasher film and looks like all involved were having a blast with this film and shows it when you watch it. The film gives so much fun. I mean, I can go on and on about scenes that really shine in this film. When people think about Christmas films, they think of those films that your family or girlfriend drag you to with a feel-good message and romance. Thank God Stephen made the cure for that with this film, that he geared towards the horror fan. The film is insanity from start to finish, and you sit there and you are not entertained by this very violent bloodbath full of hate, dark humor, cruelness, and beasts. Then maybe you should seek out Four Christmases, or something in that nature. (laughs) This is by far the best Christmas-themed horror film I've ever seen. I think Four Christmases is pretty scary. This is the rare case of someone following up a really great movie like The Aggression Scale with another great film, Silent Night. In film, much less horror, this feat these days is rare. All in all, this was a very fun film that offers something for every horror fan or on your Christmas list. To me, this feels like the original, and the one from the 80s feels like the inferior remake. This is a must-see for horror fans, perverts, and anyone who is a fan of anything that pushes boundaries and does not conform to the norm. In fanboy, Stephen Hurd, your silent prayers. He gives you a cameo of Jessica Cameron playing a nurse and Wanda from Todd in the Book of Pure Evil in some seductive outfit as well. This film has cult classic written all over it, and there is much more I did not talk about all the topless chase scenes and the total brutality of the kills in this film. This film is vile, disgusting, perverted, cruel, and full of humorous hate, but damn, it was an entertainment from start to finish. Well, he really did love it. I mean, the guy went like all in on this is like the greatest Christmas movie ever. The best review I could find. Yeah, I know. It, it, as it as it sounded. Yeah, yeah, he certainly did lean into it. He made some nice points. I'm, I'm glad he, he enjoyed the movie, but that's about all I can say. I'm glad he found a lot of enjoyment. And yeah. all that really, really clicked with him. It didn't necessarily click with us. No. It kind of, mm, eh. yeah. 
I I wouldn't watch it again. No, Unless I, I think this is to. probably the third time I've seen it. And I think I saw it by myself when it came out, like in 2012. I think I saw it that Christmas. And then I think I saw it. I think I showed it to you like five or six years later. And then now. For this. Yeah, that, that was it pretty much. I haven't really thought about it. And in that time, I've seen the original quite a few more times than that. Yeah. Probably at least eight times. So it's just kind of there. I don't really hate this movie, but I, I certainly don't really recommend it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the same way. Sadly, in 2012, Roger Ebert was very much alive, but he was going to be dead in a few months, so he did not review Silent Night. Also, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have, even if he lived to be 100 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know Ebert reviewed this week, guys, so that really does uh, end our show, and we go into Christmas now. This is the 23rd of, of December, and we're going to go watch some more Christmas stuff, and... Probably do that all day tomorrow with our daughter, and we're just going to have our own little private Christmas together, and it'll be nice. That's very true. I think it's all about, you know, being with people you love on these sorts of days. Yeah. And that that's what makes it great, you know. You know, you want to be on the warm side of the door. Oh, my God. That you care about. Don't you, Meredith? Isn't that, isn't that what makes it great? Don't you feel the holiday spirit within you? It's a warm side of the door. Yeah, it doesn't love, make any sense. That's, that's where the heat and the love is, on the warm side. It's outside, cold. You don't want that. What if you you're in inside. Texas? Today was 70 degrees. It could be warm on the outside of the door, too. <laughs> the warm side on the inner side of the door. There have been Christmases in, Christmases in Texas where I know it's been, like, in the 90s. Yeah. I can remember when I was a kid, I wanted this starter jacket, this cowboy starter jacket that was probably garish, but... I, I wanted so bad, and I got it. I had to go out and wear it. But it was 90 degrees on Christmas Day. I went out and played basketball on the thing. It was raining. <laughs> like, that, that's that's what you get at Texas Christmas. It was warm on any side of any door that day. Yeah. So you just made my point for me. It was. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. But still, don't you want to be on this warm side of the door with us? All right, people. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys. me to love a Christmas song and now you mock me that I found the perfect one. No one can hear you, not with the microphone. I know you like Buble. <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys.